Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a whole turkey's channel. <laughs> so, what do we have today? Well, we got to catch up with the world. We have to go into something that I, to be honest, I don't really want to talk about. Um, part of me has just kind of like been not talking about it and doing everything else I've been wanting to do. But now it's just kind of like looming over me. And so I, I kind of want to talk about it a little bit. So there are two big things in the world that are in America. Sorry, because there's a bunch of stuff that happened in the world. But there's two big things in America that happened recently, or, or at least are going to happen. One happened recently, one's about to happen. And they're both political. So if you don't want to do politics, mute me, put a, put a timer on for 10 minutes. We'll get to the games after that. But this it like it 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 rattles my chest, so I just kind of want to get it off. Um, we're having a recall vote for Governor Newsom in California, and for most people, they have no clue who that is, nor should they. So Governor Newsom is the governor of California, and right now there's a push being done to get him pulled from office. And so my problems with uh the actual event itself, like how it's uh, the process works is that it only takes 50% of a vote to recall the governor. And I think that's too low. I really think that's far too low. I think the number should be set at 60 or 66%. And we should probably go through some legal process to get that changed. So that's kind of the solution. Usually I save that. I was supposed to save that till the end. But that's kind of like my solution to this current issue is that we just need to change the um, recall process to either a 60 or a 66%. Because I think that two thirds is much more reasonable for removing someone from power in a non-election cycle. Like, because I feel like that's that's extra, you know? It just seems extra. So first, that's my solution to the problem, and that's my problem with the um, mechanisms behind it. But my other problem is that, like, there isn't any justification for it. Like, no real justification that I believe, especially when you understand that the same people voting for this are the same people in California who voted for Donald Trump. It really, not, everything rings so hollow. Like, they're upset because he's had some, uh, he had, like, food at a restaurant. I don't remember the name, but I remember seeing the name repeated so much, I was like, oh, this is like, a, this must have been some sort of one-off incident. So they're really mad that he had a one-off meal at a restaurant after saying that people shouldn't go out. But these are the people who voted for Trump, who had super spreader events, you know? And th there's just, like, so many inconsistencies. The best argument I've got is just look at his record. But I think if that's going to be your strongest argument, then you should just wait until the election cycle, which is next year. Like, it's right... So there's, like... There's no justification for recalling a governor. Yeah, there's plenty of reasons for you not to like him and not to vote for him, but to recall him, I, I really haven't heard one. And that's because I think this is a genuine power grab. This is just Republicans attempting to take power in California because right now, instead of actually having to win the vote, they could get it, like Gavin Newsom could get a 46 or 49% of the people say they don't want him gone, but he'll still get kicked out. And then the person who will replace him only got like 27% of the vote. The person who's leading right now only has 27% of the vote. So instead of like actually winning in an election here, which like they know they can't do, they're choosing to go this route. And I just think it's kind of sad. And there's a lot of people who are definitely getting tricked into it because they're like, oh, well, clearly we should remove him and then we'll put in someone better that we agree with. But like there's, this is such like a, this isn't the way to elect someone that actually represents the majority of the people. And I hope that makes sense, because an election, when you elect someone into power, it should be because they represent the majority of at least the people who voted. And that is not anything close to what's happening here. And so I think it's kind of gross. I think I am genuinely sad for anyone who was tricked into doing it and anyone who understands what they're doing. I think that's got a little bit gross, and you should really rethink, like what we're really here to do in politics. Like, some people just want to take power for their side, and you know what, if that's just what you want, I guess you got to do your hustle, but I feel like there's a, there's more to, like, actually gaining out of politics than just, like, 
winning for your side? Like, what about the actual majority of the voice getting to be heard, you know? So those are my things. Um, oh, that's the one thing. And then the other part is the law, the ban of abortions in Texas. That is crazy to me. So quick sp catch up to speed. Uh, they effectively ban any abortion past, uh, after six weeks. And a lot of people don't know they're pregnant before six weeks. So, like, at best, people sometimes know, like, after four weeks, because that's usually when you miss a cycle. But, like, missing a cycle by a few weeks is very, it, it's very standard, especially if the person's undergoing, like, lots of stress. So, basically, you, it could be illegal for you to do anything about it before you even know. And if you do do something about it and someone else finds out, they can take you to court and take $10,000 from you and anyone else who helps you. And I think having that type of, um, there was a word for it. It's, it's just basically like they're hunting abortions and it's just like, it's just so wrong to say that someone else not only has the right to infringe on your personal freedom and like your right to do with your body and like what's medically best for you for their own financial gain. That's disgusting. Nobody, like, almost nobody agrees with it. Like, people on so many sides are completely, like, repulsed by this. But the Supreme Court in Texas has chosen not to do anything. And they're basically, they've, like, shelved it for now. And they're just going to wait until uh, someone actually does try to sue someone who needs to get an abortion and does so. And the fact that now that it's just hanging over everyone's heads is... It's, it's just crazy. And it's, like, another reason why it's important. Like, I know I might have sounded like an irritating person a while back when I was saying how upsetting it was that Obama wasn't getting a chance to, like, get his Supreme Court nominee, which he was supposed to. And now we have a situation where we have an extremely, an extremely stacked Supreme Court and it's a very real situation. They're going to try and attack uh, abortion rights in America and just try and strip them all away. It's a very real possibility right now. And it's in part a real possibility because of a, a bunch of Republican power grabs. They did power grabs over the Supreme Court. And there's now power grabs trying to be done in California. Like, this is... The ban that was done in Texas wasn't even voted on. So it's just... It's a lot. And I think it's important that even though it's a lot, to every once in a while check in with how the world is going so we don't get disillusioned. This is really happening right now. There is a bunch of extrajudicial power grabs. And they're just far enough off where you can say, no, but, like, they're legal. Isn't the person actually in the Supreme Court? Yeah, but, like, what happened to Merrick Garland? And if Obama didn't get to pick his Supreme Court nominee in his last year of being president, then why does Donald Trump get to replace uh, Ruth, Gator, Ruth Bader Ginsburg when he only has a month till the election? You know? It's just things like these that are so violently inconsistent. It's important that we at least get to be made aware of it. Because it's clear that there are protections that the people doing these have that keep them outside of our reach. But there are still things we can do to counteract what they're doing and to stop them from doing it. So, with all that said, I hope as best as we are, we are somewhat caught up with the world. All right, now let's play some video games. I want to thank everyone who was here for any amount of time at all. It took effort to do that, and it would have been easier to not. So thank you. I'd like to remind you guys that I don't know where you are, so I don't know what time it is for you when you're watching this. So I'd like to wish you a good morning, a great day, and a nice night. I hope to see each and every single one of you back in here real soon. But, until I do, please remember to take 
it easy.